Bond yields surge. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me today to discuss a topic that has profound implications for our economy and financial markets. The recent surge in bond yields. As many of you are aware, bond yields have been climbing steadily since the Federal Reserve made the controversial decision to cut interest rates. This shift has sparked a multitude of debates among economists, investors, and policymakers alike. Today I aim to unpack the nuances of this situation, delve into the potential ramifications of rising bond yields, and offer insights into navigating these turbulent waters. Understanding the surge in bond yields. To comprehend the current landscape, we must first understand what bond yields represent. Essentially, bond yields reflect the return an investor can expect from holding a bond until maturity. When yields rise, it typically signals a decline in bond prices, indicating that investors are demanding higher returns due to perceived risks or inflation expectations. In this context, the Federal Reserve's decision to cut rates may seem counterintuitive. However, this action can be seen as a desperate attempt to stimulate an economy that has shown signs of weakness. The Fed's policies aimed at encouraging borrowing and spending have created a complex web of reactions in the financial markets. The market's response. As bond yields have risen, we must consider what this means for the broader market. The rising yields suggest that investors are increasingly wary of the implications of the Fed's policies. Concerns about public debt are at the forefront of this discussion. The U.S. national debt has reached staggering levels, and the lack of meaningful dialogue around fiscal responsibility raises red flags. The market is beginning to react to the potential consequences of excessive debt. Investors are questioning the sustainability of current policies, leading to a flight from bonds and a corresponding rise in yields. This shift is not merely a reflection of economic indicators. It is a signal that the market is starting to price in the risks associated with prolonged low interest rates and burgeoning public debt. Historical Context To contextualize our current situation, let us look back at historical precedents. For decades, the U.S. has experienced a steady decline in interest rates, a phenomenon that many have come to accept as the norm. However, history has shown us that such trends are not immutable. The last time we witnessed sustained rising bond yields was in the early 1980s, a period characterized by significant inflation and economic turmoil. During that time, the Federal Reserve, under Chairman Paul Volcker, implemented aggressive rate hikes to combat inflation. This decisive action ultimately restored confidence in the bond market, but it came at a cost, economic recession, and significant pain for borrowers. Today we find ourselves at a crossroads where the Fed's actions may once again lead to unintended consequences. The risks of over-reliance on monetary policy. As we analyze the current environment, it is crucial to acknowledge the risks associated with an over-reliance on monetary policy. The Fed has pursued aggressive measures to prop up the economy, but such strategies can create a dangerous dependence on low rates. When the market finally adjusts to the reality of rising yields, the ramifications could be severe. We must also consider the potential impact on consumer behavior. Higher bond yields can lead to increased borrowing costs for individuals and businesses, dampening economic activity. As credit becomes more expensive, we may witness a slowdown in consumer spending, which could further exacerbate economic challenges. Navigating the Future So, what does this mean for investors and everyday citizens? As we navigate this evolving landscape, it is essential to adopt a proactive approach. Here are a few strategies I recommend. Diversification is key. In uncertain times, diversification remains one of the most effective strategies. Investors should consider a mix of asset classes, including equities, commodities, and alternative investments, to mitigate risk. Focus on quality. In a rising yield environment, it is crucial to focus on quality investments. Look for companies with strong balance sheets, stable cash flows, and resilient business models that can weather economic fluctuations. Stay informed. Knowledge is power. Staying informed about economic trends, monetary policy shifts, and geopolitical developments will empower you to make informed investment decisions. Consider inflation protection. As inflationary pressures mount, 
consider allocating a portion of your portfolio to assets that historically perform well during inflationary periods, such as real estate and commodities. Be prepared for volatility. Markets are likely to experience increased volatility as investors react to rising yields and shifting economic conditions. Prepare yourself mentally and financially for potential fluctuations in your portfolio. The surge in bond yields is a multifaceted issue that requires careful consideration. The market's response to the Federal Reserve's policies reflects deeper concerns about public debt and economic sustainability. As we move forward, it is crucial to remain vigilant, informed, and adaptable in the face of uncertainty. By embracing sound investment strategies and fostering a deeper understanding of the economic landscape, we can navigate these turbulent times and emerge stronger on the other side. Market concerns on Fed's actions, the Federal Reserve's recent decisions, and the potentially grave consequences they carry. The Fed's accommodative policies, its focus on keeping interest rates low and injecting liquidity into the economy, have become a double-edged sword. While these actions may have served as short-term band-aids, I am here to discuss why they may prove disastrous in the long run, as they fail to address our nation's burgeoning debt and fiscal deficits. Today we will explore the Fed's current approach, the warning signs this situation presents, and practical steps we can take to navigate what could become a financial storm. Fed's accommodative policies, a mask over deeper issues. Let's start by understanding the nature of the Fed's accommodative policies. Over the past years, the Fed has used an arsenal of tools to maintain economic growth, particularly through keeping interest rates historically low. The idea behind this approach is simple. Low rates encourage borrowing, which fuels investment and spending, boosting the economy. But this philosophy, if overused or applied without a responsible fiscal counterpart, can lead to grave consequences. The Fed's stance has been to prioritize growth, often ignoring the accumulating debt this approach generates. But economic history warns us of the dangers of excessive debt. When governments fail to balance growth with fiscal responsibility, they run the risk of entering a debt trap, a cycle where debt grows faster than the economy can handle. And right now, I believe we're dangerously close to that scenario. Ignoring the debt elephant in the room. The debt and deficit issues that our nation faces are no secret, yet they seem conspicuously absent from public discourse. Many policymakers and media commentators talk about economic recovery and growth, but ignore the elephant in the room, our towering national debt. Imagine trying to build a mansion on a shaky foundation. No matter how grand the architecture is, the foundation can't support it. Similarly, no amount of economic growth can stabilize our economy if we continue ignoring our fiscal reality. When debt levels spiral out of control, governments have limited options. They can choose to tighten fiscal policies, raising taxes or cutting spending, both unpopular moves, or they can continue printing money, a tactic that risks devaluing the currency and igniting inflation. If the Fed fails to address this mounting debt, we may see a scenario where inflation erodes purchasing power and citizens are left struggling as costs soar. The risks of over-reliance on monetary policy. There's a misconception out there that the Fed can solve any economic problem if it simply does more. But the reality is that monetary policy, when used in excess, can do more harm than good. What we're seeing now is an over-reliance on the Fed to be the hero, with no consideration of the long-term side effects. The truth is monetary policy cannot fix structural economic issues. It can only delay their impact. We need responsible fiscal policies to complement monetary decisions. Think of monetary policy as a bandage. It can temporarily cover the wound, but without proper treatment, the wound will worsen. Fiscal policy, on the other hand, is like the medicine that addresses the root cause. Yet in our current climate, there is little political will to implement responsible fiscal measures, such as curbing unnecessary spending or tackling the deficit. The danger of normalizing high debt levels. In recent years, there's been a trend toward normalizing high debt levels, almost as if it's become acceptable to ignore the consequences. Some economists and politicians argue that debt doesn't matter as long as the economy grows. 
but history tells us that debt is manageable only when the economy grows faster than the debt itself. Today we're experiencing the opposite. Debt is growing faster than the economy. The U.S. debt-to-GDP ratio has reached unprecedented levels, and without a significant course correction, we may find ourselves in a position where debt servicing alone becomes a substantial burden on the federal budget. Rising interest rates will make this situation even more challenging. As rates climb, so does the cost of servicing our debt, which could lead to a scenario where we spend more on interest payments than on essential public services. It's a vicious cycle that could cripple our economy if left unchecked. Practical advice for individuals. In light of these concerns, it's crucial for individuals to protect themselves financially. Here are some strategies to consider as we navigate this uncertain landscape. Build an emergency fund. Economic turbulence can impact jobs, investments, and overall financial stability. An emergency fund of at least 6 to 12 months of living expenses can provide a buffer during tough times. Invest in tangible assets. Given the potential for inflation, consider diversifying your portfolio with assets that have intrinsic value, such as real estate, precious metals, or other commodities. Tangible assets tend to retain their value better than cash in inflationary environments. Reduce personal debt. In an economy at risk of rising interest rates, debt can quickly become a heavy burden. Aim to reduce or eliminate high interest debt, as this can help you stay financially resilient if rates continue to rise. Stay informed. Knowledge is power, especially in volatile times. Keep an eye on economic developments, fiscal policies, and interest rate trends. The more informed you are, the better equipped you'll be to make sound financial decisions. Adopt a long-term investment perspective. It's easy to get caught up in short-term market fluctuations, but maintaining a long-term investment perspective can help you weather the storm. Focus on investments that align with your goals, risk tolerance, and time horizon. Closing thoughts. In closing, we are at a pivotal moment. The Federal Reserve's accommodative policies may have been necessary in the short term, but without addressing the root issues of debt and deficits, these measures are little more than temporary solutions. We must face the reality that unchecked debt has consequences. It's time for the Fed to adopt a more balanced approach and for policymakers to prioritize fiscal responsibility. As citizens, investors, and stewards of our financial futures, we must be proactive. Stay vigilant, stay informed, and take steps to secure your financial position. The road ahead may be challenging, but with careful planning and a commitment to fiscal discipline, we can navigate these turbulent times. Historical Trends of Debt and Interest Rates The Historical Trends of Debt and Interest Rates Over the past several decades, we have witnessed a curious phenomenon in which interest rates have steadily declined even as national debt has soared to unimaginable levels. This scenario defies conventional wisdom and raises important questions about the future of our economy. In today's talk, I aim to explore the historical patterns of debt and interest rates, analyze why this trend may be shifting, and share strategies for navigating the economic landscape we find ourselves in. I invite you to take a step back with me to look at history and to understand why what has worked in the past may no longer apply to the challenges ahead. A look back, the decline in interest rates. For most of modern economic history, debt and interest rates have shared a seemingly paradoxical relationship. Traditionally, higher levels of debt would necessitate higher interest rates, as creditors demand a greater return to compensate for the increased risk of lending. Yet, since the early 1980s, we have seen a dramatic decline in interest rates, even as debt has ballooned. This downward trend in rates continued for four decades, creating an environment where borrowing became cheaper and national debt surged to levels previously thought unsustainable. The era from 1981 to 2021 has been characterized as a bond bull market, where investors flocked to bonds and yields continued to decline. For years, investors and policymakers have accepted this as the status quo, assuming that low interest rates and high debt levels could coexist indefinitely. But as with all things in economics, history has a way of reasserting itself. Why the current market may not respond similarly, 
Now let's examine why this trend may not hold moving forward. The market landscape today is vastly different from the one that sustained the four-decade decline in interest rates. For one, we are now dealing with inflationary pressures not seen in decades. Inflation erodes purchasing power and compels central banks, like the Federal Reserve, to raise interest rates to counteract these pressures. While low interest rates were feasible in a low inflation environment, today's inflationary conditions make it far more challenging to keep rates low. Furthermore, the scale of debt we're seeing today is unprecedented. National debt has grown to a level that would have been unimaginable even a decade ago. When debt reaches these extremes, it becomes harder to finance, as creditors begin to worry about repayment and the sustainability of government spending. As debt spirals, the cost of borrowing inevitably rises, creating a vicious cycle that can push interest rates higher. The Consequences of Rising Rates in a Debt-Heavy Economy For decades, the U.S. economy has operated under the assumption that debt-fueled growth is sustainable, largely because borrowing costs remained low. But if interest rates rise in the coming years, as they are likely to, this assumption will be called into question. Rising interest rates increase the cost of servicing debt, which diverts government funds away from productive investments and into debt repayment. Consider this, as rates rise, the interest on the national debt will consume an increasing portion of the federal budget. This phenomenon can lead to crowding out, where government spending on essential services like infrastructure, health care, and education gets squeezed out by the need to service debt. The implications for the economy are serious. Reduced public investment hampers economic growth, which in turn makes it even harder to manage debt. If this trend continues, the burden of debt could become so overwhelming that it triggers a financial crisis. And unlike previous crises, where the Fed could simply lower rates to stimulate the economy, the current environment may offer no such option. With inflation still a factor, the Fed's ability to lower rates without triggering further inflation will be severely constrained. The Risks of Ignoring History's Lessons As we look at the road ahead, we must be mindful of the lessons history has taught us. Debt-driven growth can only go so far before it becomes a liability. While past generations have been able to manage high debt levels with low interest rates, there is no guarantee that the same strategy will work indefinitely. Ignoring the warning signs would be like building a house on sand, hoping that the foundation holds. Many experts believe that a day of reckoning is coming. When it does, we may see a rapid correction as the market reacts to unsustainable debt levels. Rising interest rates, increased inflation, and market volatility could converge to create a perfect storm. By understanding the cyclical nature of debt and interest rates, we can prepare for this potential shift and safeguard our financial future. Practical Advice for Investors and Citizens In light of these potential changes, it is essential to take proactive steps to protect your financial well-being. Here are some strategies to consider. Diversify your portfolio. In uncertain times, diversification is crucial. Consider spreading your investments across a variety of asset classes, including equities, real estate, and commodities, to reduce your exposure to interest rate fluctuations. Invest in inflation-protected assets. Rising interest rates often go hand-in-hand -hand with inflation. Assets like real estate, gold, and treasury inflation-protected securities tend to perform better during inflationary periods. Providing a hedge against rising prices. Reduce debt exposure. In a high interest rate environment, debt can become a significant burden. Work to reduce or eliminate high interest debt, as this can help you maintain financial stability even as borrowing costs increase. Focus on quality investments. As rates rise, companies with high levels of debt may struggle to service their obligations. Prioritize investments in companies with strong balance sheets, stable cash flows, and manageable debt levels to mitigate risk. Stay informed. Knowledge is your best defense in an unpredictable market. Stay updated on economic trends, fiscal policies, and central bank decisions. The more informed you are, the better equipped you'll be to make sound financial decisions. In closing, the historical trend of declining interest rates amidst growing debt has been an anomaly, a rare alignment of low inflation, 
strong demand for bonds and accommodative monetary policy. However, history suggests that this trend is unlikely to continue indefinitely. We are now facing a new economic reality, one in which rising interest rates, high debt, and inflation are poised to collide. As investors, citizens, and custodians of our financial futures, we must heed these warnings. We must prepare for a shift, not by relying on the unsustainable practices of the past, but by adopting responsible financial strategies that will help us thrive in the years to come. Global Excesses and Negative Yield Debt Global Excesses and the Explosion of Negative Yield Debt Imagine lending someone money and, instead of expecting a return, accepting a guaranteed loss. Sounds irrational, doesn't it? Yet this is precisely what we see with the staggering $18.4 trillion in negative yield debt globally. Today I want to discuss how this phenomenon reflects an unsustainable economic reality. Why it's eerily reminiscent of past speculative bubbles like the dot-com era, and what it means for each of us as we navigate the financial landscape. The illogical nature of negative yield debt. Let's start with the fundamental question. Why would anyone invest in debt that guarantees a loss? Historically, investors have been compensated for lending their money through positive interest rates, reflecting the cost of borrowing and the risk involved. But in recent years, we've seen this basic principle turned upside down. Central banks around the world, particularly in Europe and Japan, have kept interest rates artificially low to stimulate growth, even pushing them into negative territory. What's happening here is that central banks are effectively charging lenders, whether individuals, institutions, or even governments, for the privilege of holding their debt. And in doing so, they've created a surreal landscape where traditional rules of finance no longer apply. Investors, desperate for a safe place to park their money amidst global economic uncertainty, have accepted negative yields, rationalizing it as the cost of stability. But let me be clear, this is not sustainable. Just as we saw with speculative bubbles in the past, what goes up must eventually come down. And the artificial stability provided by negative yield debt is no exception. The rise of global excesses. Negative yield debt is not merely a quirk of the financial system. It's a symptom of a much deeper issue, global excesses. When central banks flood economies with cheap money, they create a false sense of prosperity. Governments, companies, and individuals are encouraged to take on more debt than they can reasonably service. The result is a world awash in debt, with little regard for the long-term consequences. These global excesses, fueled by low-interest policies, have created an economic environment that rewards speculation over productivity. Investors are chasing returns wherever they can find them, leading to mispricing of risk and inflated asset values. The warning signs are there for anyone willing to look. A housing market that's out of reach for ordinary buyers, stock valuations that defy historical norms, and of course the $18.4 trillion in negative yield debt. This, my friends, is the definition of unsustainable, and it's only a matter of time before the cracks begin to show. Parallels to the dot-com bubble. If all of this sounds familiar, it's because we've seen this story before. Think back to the late 1990s, during the dot-com bubble. Back then, investors poured billions into tech startups, many of which had no viable business model. It was a frenzy fueled by hype, with little consideration for long-term sustainability. The idea was that these companies didn't need profits, they just needed to grow, and everything else would take care of itself. But as we know, that bubble eventually burst, wiping out trillions in wealth and leaving countless investors burned. Today's negative yield debt is eerily similar. Like the dot-com bubble, it's based on the idea that traditional financial rules don't apply. Investors believe that they can continue accepting guaranteed losses because central banks will always be there to keep the system afloat. But just as the tech bubble burst when reality set in, the negative yield debt bubble will also deflate when central banks can no longer maintain their policies of cheap money. The unraveling of the negative yield debt bubble. So, what happens when this bubble finally bursts? The consequences could be severe. As central banks begin to raise interest rates to combat inflation or respond to economic realities, the cost of debt will rise. 
for the governments and corporations that have relied on cheap money to finance their spending, this shift will be devastating. Debt burdens that seemed manageable under a regime of negative yields will suddenly become untenable, leading to defaults, bankruptcies, and economic contraction. Moreover, the ripple effects will spread throughout the global economy. Investors who have poured money into negative yield debt may face significant losses, and confidence in the financial system could erode. The illusion of stability provided by central bank intervention will be shattered, leaving a vacuum that markets will struggle to fill. In short, the unwinding of negative yield debt could trigger a financial crisis that would make the dot-com bust and even the 2008 financial crisis pale in comparison. Practical advice for navigating the coming storm. In light of these potential dangers, it's essential for individuals and investors to protect themselves. Here are some strategies I recommend. Diversify across asset classes. In times of uncertainty, diversification is key. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Consider spreading your investments across stocks, bonds, real estate, and tangible assets like precious metals, which can act as a hedge against financial instability. Invest in real assets. As we've seen, negative yield debt is based on a fundamentally unsound premise. To protect your wealth, consider investing in assets that have intrinsic value, such as real estate, commodities, or even farmland. These assets are less likely to be affected by the artificial distortions created by central banks. Maintain liquidity. In a financial crisis, cash is king. While holding cash may seem counterintuitive in an inflationary environment, it provides flexibility and allows you to take advantage of opportunities when markets correct. Keep a portion of your portfolio in cash or highly liquid assets. Prepare for inflation. As central banks face pressure to raise interest rates, inflation may become a greater concern. To protect yourself, consider assets that perform well in inflationary environments, such as treasury inflation-protected securities or commodity-focused investments. Stay informed. Knowledge is your best defense in an unpredictable market. Stay updated on economic trends, central bank policies, and market signals. The more informed you are, the better positioned you'll be to make sound financial decisions. Conclusion, the path forward. In conclusion, the $18.4 trillion in negative yield debt is a flashing red light, a warning that our financial system is operating on borrowed time. Like the dot-com bubble, this phenomenon is based on unsustainable assumptions and a refusal to acknowledge reality. Central banks have managed to keep this illusion going for now, but the cracks are beginning to show, and when the bubble bursts, the consequences will be far-reaching. As individuals and investors, we must take proactive steps to protect ourselves. By diversifying our portfolios, investing in real assets, maintaining liquidity, and staying informed, we can navigate these turbulent times with resilience. The path ahead may be challenging, but with careful planning and a commitment to sound financial principles, we can weather the storm and emerge stronger on the other side. Thank you for your attention, and may we all approach the future with clarity and courage.